Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. I got nothing. Ugh, this waiting is killing me. Am I the only one here who's frightened? Oh yeah, you really look scared, what with you gritting your teeth. Well, maybe she is frightened. After all, she's bringing her hands down to her crotch as if she really needs to pee. Sure wish I knew which one of these guys was McCready. Not a one of them looks like Kurt Russell. With the steam tractor pounding into it, they managed to partially uncover the UFO. Realizing it's something metal and that it's possibly an alien ship, they decide they need to free it from the ice. They figure thermite is the best bet to melt the ice around it. However, whatever type of thermite reaction they decided on was apparently a bad idea. The alien ship is made of a metal that just melts away thanks to the heat. Alien metal couldn't withstand heat! Much hotter than any re-entry friction! I'm gonna let the comic get away with this because some thermite reactions do reach upwards of 4,500 degrees Fahrenheit and re-entry friction on a shuttle is about 3,000 degrees. However, I will pipe in that the original story says that the reason that the thermite ignited the hull was because it was based off of magnesium. Which, if you were to make a spaceship out of it, well, chances are it would be a puddle of goop before it hit the ground, if not just vapor. So yeah, the ship is completely vaporized, leaving nothing but hot water. Water. Nothing left but hot water. I'm just gonna stand over this hot water while it cools so it can freeze over and trap me. Of course, Peter's teachers like him for being a nerd and all, but sadly he finds rejection with his one true love, Sally! Uh, black hair. Sally, however, is attracted to Flash Thompson, resident dickhead. Here's what may be a dumb question, but if the place is called Midtown High, why does Flash's sweater have a big T on it? Is he a member of the Mr. T army? Clothes express your personality, so express yourself, and not someone else. So you table the label, and wear your own name. Of course! Don't you know anything about science? Now watch as I prove the invulnerability of our stone bodies! Oh please, give me a grass or fighting type Pokemon, and I will end you! Without the slightest hesitation, I jump, for I know that nothing on this puny earth can harm me! Oh god, my legs have shattered into pebbles! This was a mistake! Someday I'll show them. Someday they'll be sorry. Sorry that they laughed at me! I see a killing spree in his future! As far as they're concerned, we've got a job to do. If we don't do it, if we get nixed out here today, c'est la vie! And you don't have a problem with that? What troubles me, Vogue, is that you do. If the warrior spirit is not within you, why are you here? Being a warrior means I don't care if my life is thrown away stupidly by jackasses. Peter suddenly feels lightheaded and has to go outside. What's happening to me? I feel different, as though my entire body is charged with some sort of fantastic energy. And now my fingers are honking! We open on Baron Von Blimp's dirigible floating over the North Atlantic shortly after the last issue, and apparently flying higher than a passenger jet. I would critique this fact, since Blimp's, while capable of rising up to 10,000 feet, normally would not do so, since it would mean releasing so much fuel that the return trip down would be a lot bumpier, so it's usually no more than 2,000 to 3,000 feet, but this is comic book science in a book where a guy can control a truck with a silver dollar, so really this is the least of its problems. Ulysses Solomon Archer will pay for subjecting my beautiful zeppelin to the ravages of nature! Dude, that water damage was your fault. This is what happens when you don't clean out your gutters. And from the ravages of those escaped chickens! Not a good sign for your recurring villain when he's easily bested by poultry. The officer explains that a burglar broke in and shot his uncle, but also that they've cornered the burglar at the old Acme warehouse at the waterfront. The Acme warehouse? My god! He has access to the advanced technology of Wile E. Coyote! Hmm. Dun 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 This neighborhood dun, is the worst- dun. Where's the neighborhood watch in this place? Die Hard suggests that they're not going in to end the threat of Cybernet, but to test them and see how powerful they are. Look at us, an alien criminal, a beautiful Russian gymnast, 
a former member of the very organization were being sent to confront, and the bipedal equivalent of a rechargeable battery. You sell yourself too short, Die Hard. My rechargeable batteries can't attack things with their crotches. We cut to New York City, where Bad Rock is being interviewed on a talk show. It's a parody of David Letterman, instead named David Kellerman, and of course he looks absolutely nothing like David Letterman, so whatever. Monster, it's a buck! Or does Lucy think that Bambi was a horror movie? They should give up. No chance. They haven't eaten anything but berries in three days. Oh no! You know, for teenage cavemen who subsist mostly on berries, they look like they're in pretty damn good shape. I'd also question how they speak English, but I threw up my hands last time with the talking dinosaurs. So I don't hate VHS? Have I been angry about the wrong format all these years? What, is there gonna be a comic where it turns out I actually love rock and roll?